holy shit, this is mental. Greetings, my fellow travelers in the infinite river of time. It is I, Tim, with Mars Go Home, and I come bearing gifts for you to take upon your quest to slay dragons, gather gold, and to serve the Ancient Ones. So welcome, come in, kick your feet up, and fill your metaphorical satchel up with these fine trinkets of knowledge. And be sure to stick around to the end for some free digital offerings to download into your electronic magic box. Now, this is the first of many to walk through the complete post-production process of my short film, Zeke meets Mommy's Little Angel. So buckle up my little sugar plums, because we're diving headfirst into the project management in a somewhat real-world application. So before any ado's can be furthered, let's suit up. When taking the plunge into making a short film, I find it extremely helpful to have a consistent folder structure in place before starting a new project. There isn't a whole lot of information on the vast web of the internets on this topic because, well, let's face it, it's boring as hell. All I wanted to do is just add this blue bastard looking into some dingy motel bathroom. Well, over the years, I've dialed in a project structure that works for me. And it is, of course, constantly changing because I am a beautiful butterfly that is always transforming with the wind. So if you've struggled with maintaining a consistent file structure or have project files all over the place, or you just want to become more efficient with the creative process, then hopefully this video is for you. But first, a quick message from legal. It's also important to know that you don't have to use this particular structure. But it is equally important that you have one in place, whether you're a one-person creative environment or in a team setting. And if you're just starting out, now is the perfect time to create a new habit of being organized. Also, every studio will have its own version of project management, so be ready to adjust if needed. Also, also, take what works for you. Adjust, or just ignore everything said here. This is just to provide a basic guide as you embark on your quest. Also, 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 for purposes of this short film, this is the structure I will be using. Master Project Drives. Let's briefly talk about file management. Ideally, you should have all your files in one location. However, this doesn't need to be a hard and fast rule. For instance, I have a network storage, also known as a NAS system. My particular one has close to 30 terabytes of storage, so space doesn't really become a problem. But I will use a beefy external hard drive for archiving purposes as well. That said, ideally, you want all your working project files in one location. If you use shared assets from other projects, you can have a resources drive to hold those broadly shared assets. And I can go over this at a later time if need be. But let's move on. Project naming and essential parameters. Now, before we start, we need to define a proper format for project names. This is especially helpful when handling a large number of projects all at once. Now, what's what? Who's the client? What was the date it was created? And who created it? Again, every studio will have their own way of naming projects, but they should all share some of the same details. For instance, you need a job number, used for managing and tracking. The client, who hired you? Who is the job for? A project name, what is the specific name for the job? For instance, the name of the short film you're working on. This would be the project name. You also need a date. This is the date when the project was created. And the username, who is the project lead? Who created the project? An example would look something like this. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the parent folder. This is what happens when a mommy and daddy folder loves each other so much that they create little baby folders. Or like a kangaroo that holds that baby kangaroo in that weird skim flat pouch. Well, in this particular parent folder, we'll create seven additional folders and name them. Helpful tips from Tim. To create a new folder quickly in Windows, use the keyboard shortcut Control shift n And if you're on a Mac, I believe it's Shift-Command-N. Let's name our folders. The first one will be 00output. Second will be 01footage. 02project files. 
zero three elements, zero four audio, zero five production, and zero six temp X. Now let's take a deep dive into each folder and see the methodology behind them all. Main folder one, zero zero output. I put this at the very tippy top and as the name is so cleverly titled, output, that's exactly what it is. Your output renders. Crack that puppy open and we're gonna create a few more subfolders like a Russian babushka doll. We'll have one folder just for approval renders called A for approval. This will only contain lower resolution outputs for your client to review and to hopefully sign off on so you can get paid that sweet, sweet cheese you worked so hard for. Inside this folder, we'll create individual folders and organize them by date only. This comes in handy if you need to track down past renders like Sylvester Stallone and Cobra, but instead of ushering bad guys into the pearly gates of heaven, you're hunting down past renders. Oh, it's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. Oh. This also becomes super, super handy, especially if you specified a certain number of revisions to the client. Our second folder inside the output babushka doll will be named B Deliverable. Inside the deliverable folder, we're gonna create a few more folders. This first one is optional and we'll name it TV and the other is named Web. The TV folder is for full broadcast deliverables with specific size, codecs, and quality. The web folder is for social, YouTube, Vimeo, or other web-based destinations. Additionally, but not necessary, I like to add the following. C, test frames, and D, VFX for color. Main folder two, zero one footage. Note, if you're working off a network, external drives or the raw footage you're using is just too large for your local working drives, then you can have this folder somewhere else. As an editor, when I receive a hard drive with footage on it, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to drive to the nearest hardware store, buy an ax and just go full office space on it. There's often duplicate files, odd folder names, and weird files just tossed onto the drive all willy-nilly like without a care in the world. So instead of watching the world burn, let's try and be good citizens. And let's do our best to be as clear as possible. If you're dealing with any footage shot by yourself or anyone else, this is the folder to put that raw footage in. So let's create a few easy to understand subfolders. Let's start with the most important folder and call it A Raw. Each camera should have its own folder organized by date and then organized by card name. This has been the easiest system I've come up with, but if you've got any better ideas, I want to hear them. Now I understand some of these files can be pretty hefty and sometimes our Windows 98 systems just aren't strong enough to lift them bad boys, especially if you're working with something like Alexa, Red 8K, I get it and there's nothing to be ashamed of. That's why we'll create a special little folder just for our proxy files called B proxies. Main folder three, zero two program files. This can get a bit crazy. So depending on the different kinds of programs you're using, your file system may look different. I work in an Adobe environment. So this is what mine looks like. A Adobe Premiere. All Premiere Pro project files go in here. You'll see that I have two folders called A Working and B Master. I like to work in steps, meaning edit, picture lock, VFX, graphics, and sound. These would be considered working project files. The master folder would just contain the final compiled master project file. I'm not sure if that made any sense. Helpful tips from Tim. Now, because I've been cursed in the past and I've lost work, I've gotten into the habit of redundancies and daily backups. So in the morning, when I open a project, I just save as to the date of the current day. This is just in case autosave fails, the file gets corrupted, 
or Sweet Baby Cthulhu awakens inside your project and makes your life a living hell. Because that little demon jerk will. B. After Effects. All my After Effects project files go in here. Now depending on your project, I like to separate each VFX or motion graphics scene into their own folder. For example, 0030, 0040, and 0050, and so forth. It's also helpful for me to include an AE render output in each scene folder for pre-renders and assets rendered out in After Effects to be re-imported into the project. Now I'll dive into that methodology when I tackle the VFX tracking and pipeline video later. I have a folder for Photoshop project files, I have a folder for Illustrator project files, and an XML slash EDL folder. This is if you're bringing any project in from an outside editor using the XML or EDL file formats. Those go in here. And then you have F, 3D. These are broken down into scenes, renders, and 3D models. I'll be honest, I've been getting into Blender a lot more these days, so feel free to name it to your 3D program of choice, if any. Main folder four, zero three, elements. These are just assets you'd bring in. Again, user and project specific. This is where I would put any artwork provided from the client, JPEGs, PNGs, universal motion elements, stock footage, stock photos. Here's where I have created for myself and in full transparency. It's always changing, project per project, but at least I know where it is, like a good mommy kangaroo. Main folder five, zero four, audio. This folder deserves a whole video of its own because it can be a monster. Here's a brief structure outline I use, and I will also be creating a separate video for post-production audio for short films in the future. So in true fashion, it's in order, incoming to outgoing. I have a turnover folder for all the raw audio coming from the editor. This can be OMFs as well. I have a folder for music, that's the score from the composer, stems, purchased music. I have an ADR. This can be for voiceover also. I have a folder for Foley. Any sound effects created specifically for this project. A folder for editorial. These are all the working projects and we'll come back to this in a second. And then I have a folder for mix. This is the full mix and sweetened project. And then finally, I have the deliverables folder. This is all outgoing audio files or stems going back to the editor. Now, I like to go over the e-editorial real quick. Just like my Premiere working files, I do the same with audio edits with sequential project saves with a coding system. Here's an example. I have DX for dialogue, BG for background audio, like room tones and environment and so forth. I have FX for sound effects, FOL for Foley, and MX for music. Once those are all done, I create a master project file called Super Session and place that sucker into the F mix folder. Main folder six, zero five, production. This is a super dull area, but equally important. Any important documents, references, contracts, legal stuff, receipts, and scripts will go here. This is what my starting folders look like. And then, finally, main folder seven, zero six, temp x. Temp x will be the last folder we stuff inside this weird mommy kangaroo skin flat pouch folder. This is just a holding place before a file goes to the trash or is neatly placed in a special safe space. The point of this folder is that it's for anything temporary. All right, you did it. I'm proud of you, and you should be proud of yourself. Now you can spend more time being a creative. And as promised, I'm going to share a few tips to speed up your workflow. You don't want to create new folders every time you start a new project. Luckily, there's a lightweight program out there called Post Haste 
by the fine humans over at Digital Rebellion. This is a free program for Mac or PC. For a full tutorial on Post Haste, please view the documentation and tutorials on their website. The link will be in the description. Once downloaded and installed, you'll be presented with this snazzy little dialog box where you can view and edit the templates. However, if you'd like to use the special Mars Go Home Super Starter Project folder structure, please feel free to hop on over to MarsGoHome.com and navigate to the resource area. There, in the Project Management for Short Films area, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and there you will have the option to download it. Unzip the folder and drop those in the Digital Rebellion template folder. I work on a PC. And I'm a PC. So they're located in my documents folder. Once you filled out all the parameters for your super awesome project, hit create project, select the location you want it, and then you're off to the races. And for final reiteration, you don't need to use this project format. You can create your own. And by using post haste, your workflow will speed up significantly. Radness. If you found this helpful and you want to track the process of the series, make sure to like and subscribe to this here fine channel. Hit the notification bell thingy and help me collect all six of the golden magpies so I can finally unlock that rectangular glowing copper box they keep hidden in the laboratories far beneath the YouTube headquarters. Because once open, I'll finally be able to knife that slithery squid lord bastard that keeps sending out vibrational waves of despair. You know the one. But until then, be cool, be rad, be creative. Mm -hmm.